What's up guys, welcome back. We are back at it with the XR200 top end rebuild. Uh, if you watched the last video, you had seen me tear this down to this point. Uh, just get the piston off, get the cam chain out, all that stuff, get some measurements on some parts to see what I needed to order. So I ordered them up and I was waiting, as I was waiting for parts to come in the mail, took the time to start cleaning up the uh, combustion chamber a little bit. All the gasket mating surfaces and stuff are all clean. So uh, just waiting for the uh, intake valve to come in because that's the one that was bent. I do have the uh, exhaust valve in here. I kept all the exhaust and intake stuff separate because I know they say to put all the springs and the seats and the spacers and all that stuff back uh, in the correct spots uh, where they came from. I guess to eliminate wear, excess wear, but... Uh, so I have that separated. I got that cleaned up too. This is the old vent valve. Just kind of left that out for now. I will not be using that. So we got the, uh, uh, the the head all cleaned up. I put this actually in the ultrasonic and uh, did a heck of a job on there. I couldn't get the, the real heavy carbon off, of course, so I just used uh, some real, real soft um, brush on a uh, Dremel tool on low speed and polish that up as good as I could. Got the piston cleaned up pretty well. Inspecting that closer uh, where the valve hit the piston it looks to be okay still. Um, so I'm going to reuse this. I took the measurements and stuff in the last video and it was all good. So I got new rings which came in this bundle of parts here. And right here we got rings. I got a flex hone, which I will be probably doing this next here um, for the cylinder. Since we decided we're not going to bore it or anything, it doesn't really need it. It's still in spec. I'm just going to get that glazing off, so I'm going to use the flex hone. It's actually my first attempt ever doing that, so it should be interesting. Good learning experience. So I got the, this is the uh, um, cable for the... Um, Compression release on the Kickstarter. So got that. Got the head gasket. All Honda OEM stuff. Got the cam chain. Here are the uh, cam chain guides. New oil, uh, oil cap, drain cap. O ring for the intake here. So the one I got on this one is a little bit ripped. We got the um, O ring, or not the O rings, the uh, washers for the uh, the head nut bolts, which will cinch down on there. So I got all new ones of those. Got the base gasket here. Here's the uh, wrist pin for the piston. This is a washer. I forget what part that's for. I'll have to look and see what I got that one part for, but. Washer for something. Here are the uh, valve seals. Got two of those. Piston clips for the pin. And what else? Uh, that's a bolt or a, a nut for the um, one of the engine mounts that was missing. There's another washer. And that's it for now. So, like I said, I'm waiting for the intake valve to come in and a couple other gaskets, like for the. Uh, CDI cover and all that so um, once those come in I can start putting it back together but in the meantime I'm going to start on the cylinder by using that flex hone and put some nice cross hatching in there I'm hoping to at least like I said it's my first time trying it but I've been uh, watching a lot of guys on YouTube doing it and it doesn't seem too bad so I'm going to give that a try next here we go
All right, so to prep this cylinder to get ready for the hone itself, I'm just gonna put some motor oil in there, work it around the cylinder, make sure it's got a nice even coat. All the way around, and I'm gonna take some oil and actually put it on the flex hone itself too. Okay, we got the flex on pretty well saturated. Just gonna work that oil around on there a little more. And it seems like uh, you want about six, 600, 700 RPMs on the drill. I got it on seven a lower speed. So we're gonna give that a try, but uh, got my stopwatch ready to go. It says you should run about 30 seconds worth of Honing, like I said, and um, I'm gonna give this a go here. Here we go, I'm gonna give it a try. Get my stopwatch ready. And I wanna have this thing started spinning before I put it into the cylinder and also when I'm taking it out at once, I wanna make sure that it's still spinning as I take it out. about 30 seconds worth. Just gonna get a rag, wipe this up and see what the results are. Yeah, just gonna clean paper towel. Give this a quick wipe here and see. See what she looks like. From what I can see, it looks pretty good. I'll get you zoomed in here in a second so you can see it too. So after wiping it away, I kind of see I got to do a little bit more. It's still a little glazed over. Definitely some cross hatching starting, so I'm in the right direction here. I'm just going, going to get a little bit more, I think, and just cut into this, get, get some of that uh, glaze off. I'm going to just repeat the process, put more oil in, wipe it around, and uh, probably do another 15 to 30 seconds and see what happens. I'm actually going to go in the opposite direction now with the drill. And like I said, we're going to go for another, we'll go for another 30 seconds here. Let's give it another wipe. So we're gonna need a nice bath after this. 
and then some warm soapy water. Get all this residue out of it. Yeah, I could tell that looks better. I'll get you zoomed in here in a second again. All right, so I got it wiped out again, and I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but you can see the crosshatch pattern in there, which is what you want. And uh, I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up, get it in a bubble bath, get all that residue wiped out of there. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? For anyone that's done that before, let me try to get this to focus. I think it looks pretty decent. Not bad for a first try, right? All right, I'm gonna get that out, cleaned up, and then move on to the next part. New intake valve came in the mail. So I am at the point now where I'm ready to lap these valves in. So this is actually my first attempt on doing this as well. So I got some uh, valve grinding compound. I'm just gonna slather it around the uh, area here where the valve would seat. And I'm gonna take my lapping tool, which is basically just a suction cup, and uh, put that on the valve, spin it around till this becomes uh, smooth. And then I'm gonna clean it out real thoroughly. So let's give it a try. I'm going to do the brand new intake valve first and uh, we'll see how this goes. Probably using more than I need, but I think I should be fine. All right, let's slide the valve in. Get my tool here. You can kind of feel that grittiness going away after a little while. Just spin it on there. It's supposed to do it until it feels smooth. feels pretty good there. I'm going to uh, pull this out, wipe it down, just get a look at the uh, seating area. Wipe that off real quick. You basically just want to see even, uh, an even ring around here. And then let me wipe this off and get a look at that. That should also be an even looking ring across or around the uh, seating area. So that looks pretty decent there. Just gonna seat this down in here again without the compound on it and see how it feels. Really won't know until I put the valve springs back in and then <clears throat> pour some water or something down here just to see if it leaks out once it's all under pressure and stuff through the springs. But I think that's probably pretty good there. I don't see any, oops. I don't see any breakup of that ring. It looks pretty even all the way around. So I 
I think the intake side is good. We're going to do the exhaust side next. Just going to repeat that process. Put the grinding compound on the seat here, around the ring. Basically just pulling on the other, other end of the valve, pulling down, putting pressure on it, and spinning it at the same time. And having a hard time grabbing, uh, grabbing that valve with the suction on that tool. If I wipe that off, maybe. this way this one's probably not going to need a whole lot of lapping done to it since it's the original valve going back into the original seat where it came from so there was a little bit of carbon build up in there it should take care of most of that i would think i can feel it getting smoother now just a little bit longer and I'll wipe it down and check the uh, consistency on that. It feels pretty good right now. So that there I can tell looks better than it did before I did that. So valve side's good. Let's take a look at the valve seat here. And that looks pretty good too. I see an even consistent ring all the way around. No pitting, no carbon in there. Maybe a little bit of pitting right there. Oh, no, nah, it's just, just extra compound. It looks like I came off, so I think we're good. I'm going to get this really cleaned up. Obviously, you don't want any of that grit in there with the engine running. So I'm going to clean this up along with the cylinder. Uh, and then we'll get back to uh, putting the valves back in and starting to put this thing back together. All right, I got the cylinder all cleaned up, put it in the uh, bubble bath, got the uh, all the excess compound and stuff out from the flex zone. And uh, I'm gonna check the uh, ring gap now on the new rings, just to make sure that's good. Also did the same thing with the head, gave that a nice bath and took the airline to it, got all the excess water and stuff out. So I'm gonna put the valves in next and um, get the head ready. But first I'm gonna check those uh, Check those rings on the cylinder just to check the gaps on the new ones. So the first ring I'm gonna measure is the top ring. I'm gonna slip it into the cylinder here and square it up with the piston and then get my feeler gauge and uh, get a reading on it. Yeah, so that right there I could tell already that gap is way smaller than it was when I pulled the stock rings out. So the ring end gap for that top ring should be between 0 0.20 and 0 0.40 millimeters. I'm going to start out with a 0 0.203 on the smallest end. All right, so that there is 0 0.203 millimeters. And that fits nice and snug in there. So that's the top ring. So let me get that out of there. We'll put the second one in and do the same thing because that has the same, same tolerance as it calls for, 0.20 to 0.40. by eyeballing and I can kind of tell it looks pretty close to the other one. Yeah, that one too. That fits nice and snug in there. That's the 0 0.20 millimeters. So the bottom two do have a 
tolerance looks like it's 0 0.30 to 0 0.90. And that's just these two skinnier oil rings that go along with the uh, this accordion ring or the oil wiper. I think it's the oil wiper. And we're good there too. All right. Now the rings are all set. I'm just going to put that back together on the piston and I'm going to move over to the, uh, uh, the back to the head and put the valves on next. I'm actually just going to put the rings on now while I'm working with the piston here. I figured I'll just throw them on, throw it on to the uh, rod and then turn my attention back over to the head and put the valves on and stuff. So I'm going to try to get these rings on without breaking anything. So uh, let's see how this goes. Oil retaining rings are in. I'll worry about those end gaps where they're gonna line up here. Once I get everything on, it'll just be easier. So I'm gonna move down to the second ring though. So this one's got a little tiny R mark. I don't know if you can see it, right? If it'll focus, you can see that R, that goes up. So that's gonna be the second ring in and that's gonna go in the up position with that R facing up. And finally, the top ring, which has a little silver ring on the outside of it. It's the middle or second one was all dark, and this one's dark with the silver lip on the side. So this one also does have a an R marked on it, but it's a lot harder to see. Right there. Let's see if I can catch it on the camera. It's going to be pretty tough to see it, but it's very faint on there. So I'm going to... I'm going to uh, put this one with the R facing up as well, and that'll do it for the rings. Okay, we are in. I'll get these positioned. Uh, the end gap should be in, in specific areas on the piston. Uh, I think it was like 120 degrees apart, but I'm just going to double check that, make sure I read that correctly, and then I'll, of course, oil this all up before I slip it into the cylinder. Or actually, i got to put it on the rod first, then we'll slip the cylinder on top of it. So um, let's move on. So I put the one clip in the one end here just to make it a little easier once it's on the rod. Uh, I slip the pin in and then I can wrestle that clip back on the other side once it's on the, the motor. All right, so I'm now ready to slip the piston back on. I'm going to make sure I got the intake marker facing back. And I'm just going to slip this over top of here. But first I'm going to oil it up, get the pin all oiled up. Like I said, I put the one clip in already on the one side, so I'm pretty much ready to go. Okay, I got intake facing back. I got the pin or the clip on this side for the pin. I'm just gonna slip this over top of this. So we're now ready for that second clip on this side just going to make sure that pin is all the way seated on the far end so i recommend shoving rags paper towels or something down under the piston here just in case this clip goes flying in there All right, so both pin clips are in. So we're ready to line these, uh, the 
the end gaps up on the piston and get some oil on here, get the uh, base gasket on and slip the cylinder over top. So the manual I have is showing that the the top the top ring and the oil expander ring, which is that waffle ring, should be uh, the end gap should be lined up pretty much dead on. And then you have the two retainer rings, top and bottom should be roughly 20 meters apart from each other. And then that second ring down should be um, roughly 120 degrees away from the uh, from this one here, the top one in the expander ring. So I'm going to get those lined up, get some oil on the piston, and like I said, slip the cylinder on next. I'm going to coat the inside of the cylinder here too with some oil. Looks like we got good motion here. Nothing's binding up. And next we're gonna move on to the cylinder head, get the valves back in there. So I think I'm gonna start with the exhaust side uh, valve. I'll put this in. First I'm gonna oil it all up and uh, see if I can wrestle it back on with the spring and the keepers and all that. Not something I do regularly, so I'm sure I'll be fumbling with it a little bit. But got a little coating of oil on here. Should make slipping this on a little easier. Might as well put a little oil down in there too. It should just pop on. First, I gotta put the washers back on. We got the inner washer, and this outer one that sits. You can get a good shot of that. So there's the inner washer around this part, and then there's the outer washer on the lower base of that. And I should just be able to flip my springs on with the coils at the bottom and again i saved i made sure i kept the exhaust springs and all the other pieces and stuff with the same springs and um, use them on the same side uh, I'm trying to get these keepers down in there this is gonna be tricky Slowly release this. All right, that looks successful. All right, on to the intake side. Before I throw it back on the engine, I am going to put some water down here to 
just to make sure the valves are sealing up good on the intake intake port and exhaust port and see if uh see if the lapping did its job watch that valve pour it all the way up to the top so far so good all right i'm gonna dump this out do the exhaust That looks good too. All right, now I'm gonna use the compressed air. Just get all the water moisture out of there, obviously. So moving on, we got the cylinder on. We're gonna put the uh, head on next. First, I'm gonna put the two uh, cam chain guides in there, get them lined up in their spots here. I gotta put the uh, tensioner adjuster back in, and uh, then we'll get the cam in and then fish the uh, chain through. Put these lock spacers in here. Can't forget those. Next up, head gasket. Just gonna put this upper bolt in for the uh, the guide here. Get this lined up. Gonna snug that up for now. So I ended up taking off the uh, cam sprocket just because I completely forgot about trying to get the uh, cam chain over top of that while it's up there is kind of tough. So um, once I get all this buttoned up, I'll be able to just kind of slip this on whenever the cover's on and then work the chain around so I can get the uh, marker here lined up with the top. So I just wanted to make a quick note for anybody that might be following along uh, if they're doing this project themselves. Uh, don't forget to put this bolt in before you put the camshaft on. Uh, with this in the way, obviously you can't fish that down through there. Uh, so I had to pull this out and, and then tighten it down. So uh, just, a, just a heads up if you're doing this project too. So next up, I'm about to apply some a very thin coat of the Ultra Black Gasket Maker on both mating surfaces here for the valve cover onto the head. And I'll make sure I don't put too much around the uh, camshaft bushing that goes right in here. So I'm just going to stay on the outside edge. And same thing for on the uh, head itself. But uh, just need a little bit on there. So the mating surfaces are uh, ready to go. Got the gasket maker on there and I went real light around the uh, cam bushing there. So we're gonna throw that on, get some torque down on those bolts and that way I can uh, start timing this thing. Next up, I got the cap nuts and the ceiling washers are gonna go on first. These will be torqued down in a crisscross sequence. It's one, two, three, four, I think it was in the book. I'll have to double check that, but these are gonna get 
tighten down first, then I'll work on the outside ones. And those are also in a specific sequence. So I'm actually gonna put in the, the four smaller fasteners too, because the manual showing those should also be in the sequence uh, when I'm putting the final torque down on these, on these nuts here and then these bolts. So I didn't crank these ones down yet. They're just kind of snug and I'll snug these ones up too in that sequence and then we'll get the torque wrench. So these smaller ones they're saying should go to nine foot pounds. I'm just gonna snug them up because my wrench doesn't go that low and I don't have an inch meter right now. So I'm just gonna give these a little snug on each, each one following the sequence. That should be enough for those. All right, so getting ready to time this thing, I threw the flywheel back on it's got little marks on here for uh, top dead center. So we got that, and then we have that little notch that's in the case. Right up in there. So I got that lined up. And I come up here. I got my cam in the uh, position with the lobes pointing down. And I'm ready to slip the sprocket back on. So I'm going to try to keep everything aligned the way it is. Uh, put, the, put the sprocket back on and then fish that uh, chain on top of it. So I look to be good to go here. I got the timing mark on the gear lined up with this mark. And we're also still at top dead center here, so. Got the two 10 millimeters tightened down. I'm just gonna give this a couple cranks to make sure we're not binding up anywhere and uh, check that timing again. Feels good so far. Check that timing once more. Okay, we're at top dead center. And we got the cam marker lining up with the uh, marker on the valve cover. So I think we're good. I'm gonna pull this back off and get all of the uh, cam chain tensioner stuff hooked up and make sure that it actually stays tight. Feels pretty good. So I think you gotta adjust this while the bike's running. So once I get it back on the bike, obviously I'll fire it up, open this up and get this uh, if it needs tightened anymore, but it feels pretty good on there. So 
figured this is probably a good time to adjust the valve so I'll have the uh, cover off and I can see the markings and make sure that it's a top dead center. So let me get the valve covers off, the valve caps, get these, get these gaps measured up here. So the valve clearance on the intake should be, let's see if we can get this to show up on camera, 0 0.002 inches and the exhaust should be 0 0.003. So I'm going to check the intake first. And now uh, see where we're at with that. So this here is the intake side. It's a little loose in there. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Moving over to the exhaust ports. This one calls for the 0 .003 inches. And let's see what kind of clearance we got on this one. Yeah, that one's pretty tight. Just a little bit of drag on there, it's good. Let's throw these caps on and move on. Valves are adjusted. I'm getting ready to put everything else back on here. The flywheel side cover and then the uh, CDI cover and uh, components up top. I'll just start with the flywheel. back up top here get the CDI components installed All right, well, here's the final part I got to put on this, for this video at least. And it's just the O-ring for the uh, intake boot on the carburetor that goes into the head here. So uh, throw that on. And uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has helped somebody that might be working on an XR200 and just kind of wanted to see the process because I know I went on YouTube and watched a couple of some really good videos of uh, to see what I was getting into here. So um, 
yes, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already, and make sure you hit the uh, the bell so you're alerted whenever I do get this thing on the bike. Uh, it should be on the next video for the XR200. I'll have, have it on the bike, running, and I just got to wait for a couple more little carb parts to come in, and then uh, I should be able to get it fired up and start breaking it in and all that good stuff. So thank you one more time, and we will see you all in the next one.